your greatness all the earth will sing great are your works Lord great are your deeds to worship and happy 4th of July to everyone. It's nice that you were able to come and worship on this holiday weekend and if we've got any folks perhaps live streaming from their cabin on the lake or something, we'll wish you a happy 4th of July as well. We are celebrating Holy Communion this morning and all are welcome to participate in the meal at the table and, and actually we are going to do it at the railing this morning. Um, I was going to tell our communion preparers we would, and I see the baskets didn't get out, and that's perfect. So let's come to the railing this morning as well. Uh, the flowers that you see up front are from the funeral of Kendra Liebfried that was held Friday here at uh, Christ the King. Kendra was our 13-year-old who had been battling brain cancer for the last 10 months. So I ask that you keep her family especially in your prayers um, in the coming weeks, it's Tim and Brenda are her parents, and Tyler is her older brother. There are other announcements in the bulletin, so I just invite you to read those announcements, see what's coming up, see what you might be interested in, and go from there. Don't forget there's an organ recital again Tuesday, just a couple days from now at noon as well. Please stand as you are able, and we will begin worship with our song. <laughs>
peace with one another. You may be seated. And let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks this day for the country that we call home. We give you thanks for the founders of this country and for leaders past and present. We ask that you give our leaders wisdom to govern and to guide. And show us all how to continue to do your will and your work in this place in this nation as it continues to change and to grow. We give you thanks especially for the work of missionaries this day as well. From the 70 that you first sent out to places that you yourself intended to go to those that continue to go out and do work in places far and near today. We give thanks especially for Karen Anderson and global work that's done by the ELCA. We give thanks for the young people from this congregation who will be leaving in just a couple of weeks to work in Chicago. Help all of us to be missionaries here in ways great and small, and help us as well to show support and hospitality to those who are sent and to those who come. We pray as well, God, for those who are in need of healing and comfort and peace this day. We pray especially for Tim and Brenda and Tyler Liebfried as they mourn Kendra's loss. And we pray for members among us who are facing treatment, going through treatment, recovering from surgery, making changes in their living situation and grieving their losses as well. Give them what it is that they need and help us to see what it is that they need as well so that we can also tend and care for them. We pray for all of these things. Praying in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a way God will make a way where there seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see
like to invite the young people to come up front for just a moment. Come on up here and have a seat by me. Happy 4th of July. Are you waiting for fireworks tomorrow night? Yeah, it's going to be fun, isn't it? Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, you guys are going to two different places then, huh? Oh, okay. Okay. And look at your 4th of July dress. You look very nice. Well, good morning. How are you? You look good, too. I want to know if any of you are taking a trip this summer. Anybody going anyplace? Are you? Are you going to go someplace? And so when you go someplace, you have to bring some stuff with you, don't you? Like, what do you got to bring? If you're going on a trip, what are you going to bring? A toothbrush. A toothbrush. You know what? You're right. I even packed a toothbrush in my bag today. You're absolutely right. You need a toothbrush. Let's see. Look at that. I'm set. What else do you need? Anything else you think of? What else? Clothes. Clothes. Yep. I packed my pajamas in here. Yep. And look, I got an extra pair of shoes. Might need those, right? Are there other things that you bring? Books. Books. I brought a book. You're right. I can't go any place without a book. You just ask my husband. It's true. Usually three or four. I got a comb in here, shampoo, towel. There's all sorts. Lotion. That's right. That's right. Um, probably a swimming suit if you were going swimming, right? You'd need that. And uh, you probably want to bring along a couple games if you're going to be in the car. No? How about some food in case you get hungry? Yeah. Yeah. So when you go to Kansas, you need to take a lot of food along. There's all sorts of things. You could f snack. You could fill this up. And you need it, right? Well, in just a moment, we are going to hear a reading from the Bible in which Jesus sends out people to go and do his work. And you know what he tells them to bring along? Nothing. Nothing. He says, leave your, oh, we forgot money, too. Got to have money. He said, leave your money at home. You don't need to pack a bag. You don't need your sandals. You just go. And you go knocking on a house, and if they let you in, eat what they give you. And if they don't, you go to the next house. Now, that sounds hard, doesn't it? It does. But that's what Jesus said to those people. And they went, and it worked. And they came back telling all sorts of stories about how amazing had it had been. How come, or why do you suppose Jesus told them to bring nothing with them? Why would he do that? God, it's hard for us to imagine, isn't it? But I wonder if one of the reasons is so they didn't have to worry about all that stuff. They could just focus on what they needed to do. And what they needed to do was go tell other people about God. And there are people yet today who sometimes have to go places with nothing. In the sermon, I'm going to have a video as well, and you'll see a little bit of that. So sometimes people today go with nothing. But no matter what we go with, whether we have a whole bag packed or nothing at all, God always goes with us, doesn't he? Yeah. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks that you are always with us, no matter what our journeys look like and no matter what it is that we take with us. We pray for those who are on journeys today, journeying to places near and far to spread your word, and we give you thanks for their work. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up, and have a happy fireworks day tomorrow, okay? Please stand for the reading of the gospel. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. 
Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborers deserve to be paid. But do not move from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near, and whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given authority, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You may be seated. So the gospel reading that you just heard for today was describing the sending out of 70 people to do God's work, sent out into places where Jesus himself intended to go. But you also heard that those instructions and those preparations were pretty minimal. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. And if you remember our gospel reading from last week, Jesus had invited people to come and follow him but also said, don't take time to bury your father or say goodbye to your family. Again, today he says, greet no one on the road, just get going. Go and do the work that I'm sending you to do. And that work included three things, to bring peace to those that they would meet, to tend to the sick or to those that were in need, and to share the love of God. It was a necessary and important journey, but he certainly didn't promise that there was going to be anything easy about that journey. So it's the 4th of July weekend. It's that time of year again when we celebrate the birth of our country and as well as I think the things that make this particular country unique. And one of those things that makes us particularly unique we recognize is that so many of us came from someplace else in order to make a home here. This country was founded because of the journeys that so many people made. And so journeys, whether they have been over the years to come to this country or to go across this country, we understand how important journeys can be in our lives. And they, they live, I think, in our social DNA. We also know in our history that oftentimes those journeys were related, at least in part, to issues surrounding our faith or to issues of religion. In some cases, people were and still are fleeing persecution because of their faith. In other situations, people were wanting the freedom to worship in a particular way. Or they were coming to tend to the needs of those who had already come and settled here. Even today, the relationship between religion and immigration has become much more diverse as well as much more complex. But those journeys continue. And today we still see those journeys happen where people come in order to bring peace to one another, to attend to the needs of one another, and to share the love of God. Jesus talks about the difficulty of these journeys as he's issuing his instructions to the people that he is sending. He tells them that they are going to encounter people who will receive them and show hospitality to them, but he says, you will also encounter people who will not receive you, people who will not welcome you. 
He also tells them that they need to rely on the hospitality of the people that they meet, even if it's not necessarily the way in which they might like it done. And in all of that work, he reminds them, and I think he reminds us as well today, that God is at work. Whether the journey seems to meet with success or failure, he says, remember, the kingdom of God is always at hand. The kingdom of God is near. The work of God is continuing. Journeys are a part of all of our lives. Sometimes those journeys are, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes and obstacles that we might encounter. But they're also in our history, our collective history, from Abraham and Sarah to Mary and Joseph fleeing with baby Jesus to our own ancestor stories that we tell and that we share to the stories of our Somalian and Sudanese neighbors that are now living with us here in Mankato. Whatever the journey is, those journeys seem to make up our lifeblood. So as we celebrate the founding of our own country, how is it that we remember these journeys of the past? And maybe just as importantly, how is it that we should be honoring the journeys that continue yet today? One of the things that strikes me about this gospel reading is both the importance of the journey for the 70 people who are being sent out, but also the importance of this journey for the people that are receiving these strangers or these newcomers, the importance of the hospitality that they were being shown by other people. Those who were willing to open their doors to these 70 who had been sent out received peace from these people. They were also the beneficiaries of the ministering care that was being offered to them as well. And again, maybe most importantly, they were able to hear the good news. They were the ones that got to hear and understand how God was at work in their lives. As I said during the children's sermon, I've got a short video for you to watch today. The video has been produced by a Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services, LIRS. And that's an organization that was founded by Lutheran congregations back in 1939. Their work continues today. The ELCA is one of their church partners. Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota is one of their service partners. But their mission is to stand with, embrace, and advocate for migrants and refugees. And this clip that you're about to watch is just one of many stories. Twice the bullets passed my head. I, I, I heard the, the sound of the bullet. But it's supposed to be in me, but actually it's take its way to a friend of mine. And the first four bodies that we saw in front of us is just torn everything black. It takes courage to go into the unknown, leaving everything behind. I don't have an ID to prove my identity. I don't have a passport. I have nothing. They talk everything to the security forces. So this feeling is that you feel you are just a number. A number with, with, um, with no identification. So no, no, no one can I, I, no one recognize you. Today we have, uh, there's a refugee crisis, a human crisis actually in, in Syria. Seven million people now two or three millions of them in the refugee camps and the others in the cities all over the world uh, with no rights, just numbers. In the refugee camps, there are so many stories. Flight from war, conflict, persecution, and incredible violence. Stories of loss, stories of fear, and stories of remarkable hope. They torture me for torture, for the torture itself. Your imagination start working in such a way, trying to distinguish myself from myself, from my body. It takes courage to make the refugee journey. From Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, to our own ancestors, 
This is our human story. It takes a generous heart to love our neighbors. When we welcome newcomers into our nation, community, and churches, we answer God's call. It's the country that's given my name back. It's the country which has given me all the chance, all the way, to be a normal person under the United States of America protection. Since World War II, LIRS has offered extraordinary welcome. Lutherans have been God's hands at work in the world, resettling 500,000 refugees, offering safety, hospitality, and a new start. It's an American story. It speaks to our deepest values and belief. America is a land of immigrants and refugees. And 75 years is just the beginning. Join LIRS, walk alongside refugees and migrants. In our scripture reading, as those 70 who had been sent out returned, they returned and they were rejoicing. They were rejoicing for the work that they had been able to accomplish. Thanks to the work of Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services and other kinds of organizations, journeys that happen today can also result in rejoicing. So this weekend, as we celebrate the 4th of July and the birth of our country and the many journeys that are a part of our heritage that ended in rejoicing, let's also contemplate the journeys that continue today. Let's consider how it is we might want to support or even participate in those journeys and how it is that we can receive and welcome newcomers into our midst. And through all of that, may we also remember the kingdom of God is near. God is at work in our world, in our lives, and in the lives of our neighbors. Amen.
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. The table has been prepared, and all are welcome.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He's above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love Grace of God we will carry 